Your Coca-Cola bottler presents Claudia. Claudia, based on the original stories by Rose Franken. Brought to you transcribed Monday through Friday by your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. Relax, and while you're listening, refresh yourself. Have a Coke. And now, Claudia. Claudia! Telephone! I hear it, Mama. It's probably David. I suppose you recognize the ring. Of course I do. David has a very special ring. Hello. Hello, darling. We're just talking about you. I told you it was David, Mama. What? Oh, I was just telling Mama I told her it was you. I'm listening. What is it? Hey, can't you tell me? So you didn't buy a car, did you, David? Oh. Well, well, certainly we'll be there. Of course. Goodbye, darling. That was David. Oh, I judged. What did he have to say? Found it very mysterious. Well, get your hat and coat on. I'll do no such thing at this time of the evening. What for? I don't know, but David says to meet him at the corner drugstore in half an hour. Why? He didn't say why. He's your husband. You go find out, but don't drag me along on any wild goose Listen, day. you have to come. He insists. What about my roast? Oh, leave it in the oven. It won't walk away. David said it was very important. Yeah, I wonder what it can be. <laughs> Why did you rush me? We're early, Chloe. So's David. I can see him on the corner. He's very pleased with himself. You're not that good. You can't see David's face from here. No, but whenever he's pleased with himself, he kind of relaxes all over, trying to look as if he wasn't pleased with himself. <gasps> he sees us. Stop jumping up and down like that. Everybody will think you're crazy. You can't wait. He's coming over to meet us. Say, Mama, let's not ask him. It'll be much more fun to make him tell us. Your father acted the same way when he bought three lots in Florida. He found out later they were underwater. Mama, you don't think David could have bought... Let's walk a little faster. Claudia, have a little pity on your old mother. I'm out of breath as it is. Oh, hello. Uh, hello, Mrs. Brown. Hello, David. What'd you do? I thought you said it'd be more fun not to ask. I couldn't wait, Mama. Say, David, you didn't buy any real estate, did you? Real estate? Hardly. Then why'd you ask Mom and me to meet you here? Oh, thought you two girls might like to go for a walk before dinner. We had a walk when we went shopping this afternoon. No use, Claudia. He's not going to tell us anything till he's good and ready. Tell you anything? Why, the way you two girls are carrying on, you'd think it was unusual for a man to invite his family for a walk before It's dinner. perfectly usual, only not for you, darling. Any particular direction you'd like to steer us? Oh, any old way at all. Good, then let's go back up the street. Uh, except that way. I've seen that street. Let's, uh, let's walk this way. Fine. You haven't gone this way since you left for work this morning. Oh, hardly noticed it then. Hey, watch out for the curb. We'll, we'll cross over. Hey, careful. I'll wait for the light. Oh, it just turned red. Woman driver, of course. All clear. Let's go. Of course, we are hardly conscious that we are being steered. Such a thought never entered my head, Mrs. Brown. I simply suggested going this way because it's a shortcut. Didn't you know, Mom, it's only a block out of the way? Oh, mm -hmm. nice. The block out of the way is the shortest distance between two points. Why, you two girls don't get run over will always be a mystery for me. Hey, watch out for the car coming. We saw it. Oh. I never feel safe crossing the street with you two. That's funny. I feel safe with you. Curb, Mother Brown? David, you're treating me like a runaway from the old lady's <laughs> home. <laughs> That's because I think so highly of you. And now, down this way. David, you're not being fair. Where are we going and why? No place, no reason. Oh, incidentally, what did uh, you two girls think of that house we just passed? Didn't notice. Which one? Number 141. I thought it was pretty nice. That's why I sublet an apartment for us there this afternoon. David, say that again. I said I thought it was nice. That's why I sublet an apartment there this afternoon. David, really? Then this is a wonderful surprise. David, an apartment of our own? Why didn't you tell I me? I just did. Molly, it's a wonderful apartment of our mm. own. Say, let's walk by that building again. Oh, it's a beautiful building, mm, David. Like it, do you? How many rooms? Can I see the apartment now? Oh, wait a minute. Oh, I, I just want to stand here and admire that building. How in the world did you get it, David? Through Roger. One of our clients, Mr. Tucker, a writer, moved to Hollywood. 
He'll be out there for at least a year, so Roger sold him a bill of goods that he should sublet it to me. Good for Roger. Oh, but it's a beautiful building, David. Can we afford it? Fits our budget to a T. Sounds better all the time. I've just got to see it there. <laughs> how, how many rooms? Uh, four rooms and a large foyer. Mm, and you wonderful. can't see it now. Hmm? Anyway, I saw it this afternoon with Roger, and it looks fine. Why Perfect. can't we see it, David? Well, the fellow who owns the apartment is something of a, well, eccentric. Oh. He said if I wanted it, I'd have to come over right away. I called you to it, and you were out. See, Mom, I told you we shouldn't mm-hmm. have gone Roger and I went I on over, you. and he showed us the place, and he wanted an immediate answer. I said yes, and he said, uh, well, now you and your wife can move in next Friday. I'll be out by then. Meanwhile, I don't want to be disturbed. <laughs> I'll be thinking. <laughs> he doesn't care how disturbed I get while he <laughs> thinks. Oh, I won't be able to sleep till next Friday. Is it very nice, David? Very, very nice. I told him we'd take care of his goldfish. Another mouth to feed. Another four mouths to feed. There's one in each room. Wonderful. I won't be lonesome then. Mom will be alone then. Oh, don't worry about me. I'll be glad to settle down to a nice, quiet, normal existence with you two out of the way. Oh, now, look, you know you like a nice, abnormal existence with us all around you. (laughs) (laughs) It isn't as though we were moving to Alaska, young lady. You're only one block away from Mother's apartment. That's why I thought you'd be specially pleased. I am, David. I can take care of myself. Call up whenever you're lonesome. Is there a telephone, David? Two. One in the foyer and a beautiful gold one in the bedroom. (gasps) A gold phone off here just like Madame Du Barry. I'll call you up every morning as soon as we wake up, Mama. You better not. When you two clear out, I'm going to start a new life. I'm going to sleep late every morning. Good for you. You couldn't. You know you get up automatically every morning at 8 o'clock. Then I'm going to learn how to roll over and sleep until 9. David, I'm so glad for both of you. No, I know you are, Mother. Thank you. Furniture, David. What about furniture? Mr. Tucker's leaving his furniture in the apartment, so we'll be using his. Oh. Be almost like living in a hotel then, won't it? Mm-hmm. I mean, we, we, we won't have the fun of buying our own furniture and old little things around the house. Well, we, we will when we get our own apartment. This is just a sublease, remember? And say, wait a minute. We look rather silly just standing here gaping at the building. <laughs> we do, don't we? I saw your <laughs> elevator man to be watching us. I think he thinks we're suspicious characters. Oh, let's go back to Mama's house. We won't be spending much time there. Only a week longer, Mama. We better hurry. I left my roast in the oven under the slow flame. Roast beef? Ah, favorite food next to steak. You had steak three times this week, so I'm not apologizing for the roast. None required, Mrs. B. How about eating in your new apartment, oh, David? Oh, Claudia and I live like kings, Mother. You'll live like a king. I'll live like a queen. Now, don't take me so literally. I was using a figure of speech. Well, so was I. I meant, is Mr. Tucker going to leave you the silverware in China? Well, as a matter of fact, I didn't ask You him. can call him up when we get home. Uh, he doesn't want to be disturbed. Oh, no. oh, yes, that's right. He'll be thinking. Mm-hmm. Would be nice to know, though, wouldn't it? Well, we'll have to wait until Friday to find out. How about linen? Tablecloth? And sheets for the bed. Will he leave us those, or should we go out and buy some? Mrs. Norton, Mrs. Brown. I looked at the apartment and told him we'd take it. I didn't ask questions about unimportant details. <gasps> Unimportant details, just like a man. Say, have you ever tried sleeping on a bed without sheets? Once. I didn't like it. We'll bring a set of our own sheets along, just to make sure. How about cross ventilation? I am sure that the wind howls through the apartment. (laughs) Good. (laughs) Must have plenty of windows there. Well, I didn't notice. All I know about the place is that it has four rooms, a foyer, two phones. We move in on Friday and like it. David, will you help me with this zipper, darling? No, I don't know if I should. You haven't thanked me probably for finding that apartment yet. There. Proper enough? Mm, fair. <laughs> now, let me zip that zipper. <gasps> hey! Hey, a pincher? No, but you could have. You know, I guess I had too much roast beef for dinner. Whenever I have too much roast beef, my dress shrinks. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. The same thing happens to my pants. Really? There. You're a free woman now. Need help getting out of that dress? No, thanks. Oh, I sure miss Mother's cooking when we move into our own place, Claudia. Hmm. I'll miss Mama. Of course you will, Claudia. She's a marvelous person, and I love her. But I'm glad we'll be moving out. She probably will be, too. She has been working rather harder with both of us here. Well, not for that reason, dear. Why, then, Dave? Claudia, we're a newly married couple. There's there's a lot we've got to find out about each other. I know all I want to know about you, David. (laughs) Do you? Yes, I do. But what I mean is, we've got to be selfish about our marriage for a while. We'll have to make certain decisions which can only be made by your feelings and mine. There'll be experiences which should only be ours. Do you understand me, Claudia? I... 
I think I do, David. Oh, David, don't think I'm a mama, baby. Only I... I know, I know. Come here. Oh, David, hold me tighter. I get so sad, I think of your mama here all alone after we leave. Oh, she'll get used to it, Claudia. Just as you'll get used to being without her. It's the way of life. We enter other people's lives for a short time, and then we go out of them. I never want to go out of your life, David. You won't, darling. That is, if I have anything to say about it. I won't let it happen. Oh, a midnight visitor. It's only 9.30. You two asleep in there? We haven't gone to bed yet, Mom. We're talking. Come on in. I don't want to come in. I've seen enough of you. I just want David to open my window for me. It's stuck. Be right there, Mother. I'll go brush my teeth. Hey, if you talk, talk loud so I can hear. You'll only hear the things we want you to hear. Oh. This window, Mother? That's the one. It wasn't stuck, was it, Mother? No, David. What do you want to talk to me about? About us leaving? Yes. David, you know that pretty speeches don't come too easily to me. I know, Mother. I'm going to miss having both of you with me terribly. It's natural I should, but it's not natural for Claudia to miss me like that. You know, in funny little ways, without her even knowing it, she might try to convince you that you ought not to take the apartment. You mustn't let her, David. I won't, Mother. If it were two rooms in a cellar, it's right for you to be by yourselves. It's the way it should be and the way I want it to be. Good luck, David. Thanks. Thanks for saying everything you said, Mother. Hey, in there, stop whispering. I can't hear you. Nothing to hear, Miss Nosy. The window's open and I'm sending your husband back to you. He's cluttering up my room. <laughs> Tell him to come in here and clutter up mine. You hear her? Go in and clutter up a room. Good night, David. Good night, Mother. <laughs> story material used on this broadcast of Claudia was under the supervision of Rose Franken and William Brown Maloney. After five long years, the supply of Coca-Cola is almost normal. Now you can stock up your refrigerator for the family and for guests. You can step right up to the familiar red cooler and find Coke there in its accustomed place, frosty and inviting. You can play refreshed, work refreshed, drive refreshed, shop refreshed with delicious ice-cold Coke. And the price is still five cents. Every day, Monday through Friday, Claudia comes to you transcribed with the best wishes of your friendly neighbor who bottles Coca-Cola. So listen again Monday at the same time. And now this is Joe King saying au revoir and remember, whoever you are, whatever you do, wherever you may be, when you think of refreshment, think of Coca-Cola. For ice-cold Coca-Cola makes any pause... The pause that refreshes. Thank you.